as you are reverent, you will be prepared to feel the spirit of your Heavenly Father in your individual heart and mind tonight. This will be an enjoyable activity for you. During this process, you have your scriptures and you have your journals. You have your revelation cards. So I invite you to make notes, read scriptures, and pay attention to the promptings that come into your mind as you sit here and ponder the things that we've talked to you about and will talk to you about. when my husband and I traveled to one of the most remote locations of our mission so that we could conduct, conduct temple recommend interviews. These Nigerian saints believed the counsel of President Howard W. Hunter when he said it would please the Lord if every member to, would be worthy would hold and would carry a current temple recommend even if proximity to a temple would not allow the immediate or frequent use of that recommend. We realized that they had trekked from their village a distance of 18 miles round trip just to obtain a temple recommend that they would never be able to use. Faith is not to have that perfect knowledge. Therefore, if ye have faith, ye hope for things which you cannot see, but which are true. Faith is the most personal reflection of adoration and of respect and of devotion to our Heavenly Father and to His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, you have a choice. In everything, you always have a choice. You can either press forward in faith or you can just give up. I say, press forward. There are those who can teach um, us regarding faith, but we have to open up our hearts and our minds. There was a woman that lost her husband and she had to raise her son by herself. There was a famine in the land. There were people dying daily. A man came to her and said, make me a cake, meaning, a piece of bread and the woman said um, as the Lord speaketh I will do so but realize that this is the last that I have and I was going to make it and then afterwards die with my son because we had no more food this person was the prophet Elijah he said fear not but make me a little uh, make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and thy son now think about this, she only had enough for herself and her son. Can you imagine what she must have thought? The prophet continued and says, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. The woman, after hearing this prophetic promise, went in faith and did as Elijah promised. And she and he and her house did eat many days. We often learn to make decisions based upon what we see, and on what evidence is before us and what appears to be best for our own interests instead of what the Lord wants us to do. Faith has eyes to penetrate the darkness, seeing into the light beyond, 
your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You have a choice, and you will always have a choice. You can either press forward in faith, or you can give up. Please, press forward in faith. Her name was Amanda Smith, and on that terrible day in 1838, after the firing had stopped and the mob had returned, she returned to the mill and saw her eldest son, Willard, carrying her seven-year-old son, Alma. His entire hip bone had been shot away. He was not dead. We laid little Alma on a bed in her tent, and I examined the wound. It was a ghastly sight. Oh, my heavenly father, I cried. What shall I do? Thou seest my poor wounded boy and knowest my inexperience. Oh, heavenly father, direct me what to do. I was directed to take ashes and make a lie and put a cloth saturated in it right into the wound again and again. Having done as directed, I again prayed to the Lord and was again directed as distinctly as though a physician had been standing right next to me. Alma, my child, I said, you believe that the Lord made your hip? Yes, mother. Well, the Lord can make something there in the place of your hip. Don't you believe he can do that? Do you think the Lord can, mother? Yes, my son. The rest of his life, he was never crippled the least bit, even though he had something different than a hip joint as we do. Those who walk in faith will feel their lives encompassed with light and the blessings of heaven. They will understand and know things that others cannot. Those who do not walk in faith esteem those things of the Spirit as foolishness. For the things of the Spirit can only be felt and discerned by the Spirit. You have a choice. You always have a choice. You can either press forward in faith or you can give up. So go press forward in faith. Brother Moyle, every week, would work on the temple. To make his shift, Brother Moyle would have to begin leaving his home at 2 a.m. One day there was an accident when Brother Moyle was milking his cow. The cow kicked. Brother Moyle shattered his leg. The doctor looked at it, decided that his leg would need to be removed. Miraculously, Brother Moyle recovered from the surgery. Brother Moyle was not one to sit around with a piece of wood and he carved an artificial leg. So one morning at 2 a.m., his wife found him tying his leg on to his, the remaining part of his leg uh, and they're getting ready for his shift at the temple. Where the memorial continued that every week, walking 22 miles to the temple and 22 miles home. There is a power in faith that gives us the ability to accomplish our righteous goals. Now you have a choice. You always have a choice. You can either press forward in faith or you can quit. I admonish you to press forward in faith. Anna lived a long time ago, and I'm going to tell you a story about when she was 11 years old and her family joined the church in Sweden. But when they joined the church, they were ridiculed for their beliefs. So much so that their mom decided that they should move to America and join the saints in Utah. So that's what they were going to do, but they could not afford to send the whole family at once. Anna was about your age. And she was going by herself, made the trip by boat across the Atlantic Ocean, and then by train went to Utah. She arrived at the train station around midnight, and the person that was supposed to pick her up didn't come. She said, I started to cry and thought about the last thing my mother told me. If you come to a place where you can't understand what the people are saying. Don't forget to pray to your Heavenly Father because He can understand you. Then they started to hear footsteps, racing footsteps, and they saw a woman come up and the woman was kind of frantically looking around and then caught Anna's eye. And she kind of was surprised and Anna was surprised too because she recognized this woman and the woman recognized her. This woman, was a Sunday school teacher that Anna had in Sweden. She told Anna, I was awakened over and over again. I was prompted to come to the temple to see if there was anyone there that I knew, and there was. You always have a choice. You can press forward in faith, or you can stop and give up. Always press forward his name is Albert Peters and so he tells a story 
of he and his companion who served in the islands of Samoa. This set of missionaries gave the first discussion to this man whose name was Atiati. And he was a man that had been suffering from polio and really hadn't been out of his bed for over 20 years. He had been waiting for someone to come and talk to him about the true restored gospel. He had been waiting and praying for 20 years for someone to come and talk to him. And he was so excited when they came in and he was hearing the true gospel. And so they continued to teach him and it was decided that he was ready for baptism and Atiyati wanted to be baptized. He set up the baptismal service and it was much like many that you guys have been to. One of the missionaries gave a talk on baptism and testified of the importance of baptism as an essential ordinance. And then Elder Peters and his companion picked up Atiyati, one on each side, because if you remember, he had polio and he could not walk. So they picked him up and they carried him toward the font. And as they did so, Atiyati raised his voice and said, Stop! Today's the most important day of my life. To be baptized is the most important thing I can do, and I was not going to be carried to my baptism. And this man who hadn't stood for 20 years, laid in a bed for 20 years, stood on his feet and very shakily and slowly took the last few steps toward the font and walked down the steps into the baptismal font and there was baptized. And he said, "I, you know, faith has the power to move mountains and if it can do that, it can make my legs move. Through faith, you can do anything. Each of you has a choice. You have the choice to give up and quit. How easy would it have been for him to quit? Or you have the choice to go forward in faith. It's up to you. You have that choice. You have that power. Our Father in Heaven will bless you if you make that leap of faith to move forward in faith. Let me tell you a story about a young woman in Sao Paulo, Brazil who had to take that step into the fog. She was a university student. The university had a rule that if you were not current with your tuition, you could not take a test. Each month when she was paid, she would take her money for her tithing, set that aside, and set her money aside for her tuition. However, one month she, she had some financial difficulties and she realized that she did not have enough money for both her tithing and her tuition. If she could not take those tests because she had not paid her tuition, she would lose credit for that entire term. She would lose a significant amount of time invested in the pursuit of her degree. She would have to do it all over again. On Saturday, as she had been pondering this for several days, the thought and impression came to her that when she was baptized, she had made sacred covenants. And one of those covenants was that she would always keep the commandments. The next day, Sunday, she went and paid her tithing to her bishop. Once again, the Spirit gave her the insurance that she was making the right decision. The following day, Monday, she went to work. At the end of the day, her boss, who was kind of a strict and austere man, he stopped and turned back to her and said, how are your studies at the university doing? He never had asked that before. She says they're doing well. He says, good, we'll see you tomorrow, and left. Shortly after he left, his secretary came in to her and looked at her and says, you are a very lucky young lady. The boss decided today that he would pay your tuition and books for the rest of your college until you got your degree. As the secretary left, she dropped her knees there in the office and with tears in her eyes, thanked her Father in Heaven. He says, Father, I only needed tuition for a month, and yet you provided far more than my hope and expectations were. We are a people of faith. We move forward by faith. This work is accomplished by faith, and is accomplished as we move forward and progress in the direction the Lord would have us. We all have choices to make in our lives. We always have choices. We can, we can choose to proceed by faith or we can choose to give up. We should choose to proceed by faith. And I'd like to tell you a story about a young man by the name of Thomas Michael Wilson. As a teenager, had contracted bone cancer and was very sick. After uh, a lot of struggling and fighting that cancer, 
um, Thomas went into remission. In the uh, late 80s, he received a mission call. And Thomas was called to the Salt Lake City, Utah mission. And um, it just so happens, I served in the same mission for a short time while waiting for a visa to go to my mission. Uh, while he was there, he had the opportunity to teach many people and uh, got to participate in baptisms there in the baptistry at the Tabernacle on Temple Square. Uh, after 11 months of service on his mission, Elder Wilson's bone cancer uh, came out of remission and he got very sick. And he, uh, so, so much so, that they had to amputate his arm and shoulder. Um, he continued to serve as a missionary. His father, so impressed by his son's faith and diligence, joined the church. And so they were able to come while they're in Salt Lake and be sealed together as a family. Right upon returning home, Thomas passed away. And Thomas was, back, was buried with his missionary tag on. So Thomas endured to the end in faith. So we all have challenges in life. So we can either give up or we can endure in faith. And it's my challenge to you and my testimony to you that our Heavenly Father will bless us with the strength that we need to endure to the end in faith. My daughter and her husband took a little while to find each other and after a few years realized that they might not be able to have children. They prayed and fasted, they sought medical help, and then after a little while they were blessed to learn that she was going to have twins. But it didn't go smoothly. About three and a half months before the twins <clears throat> were supposed to be born, my daughter found herself in labor and delivery. A nurse came from the intensive care unit and showed this couple pictures of all of the wonderful machines that they have and equipment to keep babies alive. And after another two and a half months, they were able to take that little boy off the ventilator. He learned to eat, he could breathe on his own, and the parents were able to take him home with special monitors. However, the little girl kept knocking her little her ventilator out, and the respiratory therapists were having a hard time continually reinserting that ventilator. Let me read a letter from this young couple, mm -hmm. dated December the 4th. Dearest family, wonderful news, blessings from the Lord, our heartfelt thanks for your prayers and fasting in behalf of our little girl. Yesterday morning she came off the ventilator and has been off for 24 hours at this writing. To us, it is a miracle. We are praying that this will mark the beginning of the end of their hospital stay. And we even dare to hope that she'll be home for Christmas. Well, the little girl did make it home for Christmas. Our family testifies that our God is a God of miracles. Yesterday, the same today, and forever. Each of us is burdened with trials and tests in our life. Some of us lose family members. Some of us are affected by divorce. Some of us have health issues. All of these tests and trials are gifts from our Heavenly Father. You have a choice to make. You always have choices. You can either press forward or you can give up. Press forward. Brother Cannon had been given the assignment to oversee the building of the tabernacle. They had shipped some glass from New York. This was out in the desert. I mean, nobody lived there and they had settled the area. So everything that they had, they either made or was shipped in from the East Coast. Um, so they, they put the glass on a ship and it sailed around the tip of South America and up the coast into California and then they had to send out a team of horses 
and wagons, or uh, oxen and wagons, to uh, pick up the windows. They needed $800, which was an amazing sum at that time. Living in nearby Washington County, Utah, was Peter Nielsen, a Danish immigrant who had been saving for years to add to his modest two-room adobe home. It was on the eve of the freighter's departure um, to California, Peter spent a sleepless night in his tiny little house. He thought of his conversion in far-off Denmark and his subsequent gathering of the saints in America. At the first light of morning, as it fell on the beautiful cliffs of southern Utah, a knock came at David Cannon's door. There stood Peter Nelson holding a red bandana which sagged underneath the weight, saying, Good morning, David, said Peter. I'm, uh, I hope I'm not too late. You will know what to do with this money. With that, he turned on his heel and retraced his steps back to Washington. Back to a faithful and unquestioning wife, back to a two-room small mud home where he lived out the remainder of his days. You always have a choice. You can press forward in faith, or you can give up. Please press forward in faith. From here on out, there's no talking. Um, this is something that you need to do by yourself. I want you to think about the faith of the people that you just learned about, and um, it will help you on your journey. Uh, you can choose to give up, or you can choose to press forward in faith. Press forward with faith. What's up? Which way am I supposed to go? Choices have consequences, but you always have a choice. You can choose to press forward in faith, or you can give up. Press forward in faith. And why? We sometimes take wrong turns. Those wrong turns have consequences. You have a choice. You always have a choice. You can go forward in faith or give up. Go forward in faith. You're about to take a journey, a symbolic journey of your life. And sometimes in life we take turns that um, we had hoped not to and don't get the results that we had hoped for either. Um, your goal tonight is to, ex to get through this journey and to accept the burdens and the consequences that are placed upon you and to continue in faith in order for you to finish this journey, you need to be accountable for all of the burdens that you received, which are the marks on your card. Remember, you have a choice. You always have a choice. You can either give up or you can press forward with faith. Press forward with faith. Sometimes in life we make wrong turns, and, and those wrong turns have consequences. 
You have a choice. You always have a choice. You can go forward in faith, or you can give up. Go forward in faith. consequences so your progress has stopped you can't go any further than this however the good news is that the savior savior did the atonement because of the atonement we can drop the, our rocks our burdens at his feet and have a clean slate and then you can continue your journey